Hot Wheels. <laughs> 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 uh, so just before we start, uh, I would like to acknowledge the elders, families, and forebearers of the Bunwarung and Woiwurrung tribes of the Kulin, who were custodians of this land for many centuries. We acknowledge that the land on which we meet was the place of age, old ceremonies, of celebration, initiation, and renewal, and that the Kulin people's living culture had and has a unique role in the life of this region. We pay our respects to the elders, both past and present. Welcome to our panel. Are we getting the slides up? Yeah, slides yep. up. Yeah. <laughs> Page to pixel. Um, so for those who just walked in here randomly, the idea of this panel is that there are lots of people on the internet and events like PAX who debate what the best video game movie is. Uh, and so we wanted to try and flip that idea on its head to talk about how video games adapt other mediums like comics, books, uh, obviously movies and TV, and just sort of talk about the, in, the adaptions and the adaptations that stuck with us, regardless of whether they're good or bad games, did they nail being a good adaptation of the source material? We talk about what's good, what's bad, and whether or not anyone remembers the Dante's Inferno action game. <laughs> Do people remember the Dante's Inferno action game? Yeah. Oh yeah. So like a few people... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, rest in peace. All right. <laughs> so, with me today, uh, for this video, I'm Fergus Halliday. I'm the editor of PC World Australia and Good Gear Guide. I write about tech and games and all that good stuff. To my left, I have David Smith, the editor of the AU Review, the games editor, specifically, yeah. of the AU Review. Uh, I have Matthew Hewson, the editor of Player2.net. I have Kat Benstead, a brand manager at Turnlift. And I have Jess Zamet, uh, director at Queerly Represent Me. Uh, so, before we move, let's just jump right into it. Mm -hmm. David, talk to me about the Da Vinci Code oh. video game. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. This one uh, came out on the PS2 oh, oh, so, so long ago. Like, this was sort of when um, the movie tie-in game was dying, basically. Um, and they're really scraping for ideas of what we can turn into an action game. Uh, it's a third-person shooter. Action? Like, <laughs> like, what is it? <laughs> yeah. With their gunfights? Yeah. yeah. Does Robert Langdon shoot people? I thought he was an archaeologist. <laughs> yeah. Or like a professor, right? Yeah, it's like a yeah. interesting yeah. 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 I thought this what? was like we're solving art crimes. <laughs> and you know, that's with, with a gun, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. A real paintbrush. What yeah. is yeah. this? Yeah. 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 crime, like with your brain? Yeah. With logic? Yeah. Yeah, well, well, they have puzzles to solve. Did you shoot things? Is yeah. that the puzzle mechanics? <laughs> no. Oh my god. Look, okay. No, 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 you like push statues and shoot yeah. statues and stuff. No, it, no, not, not a good adaptation at all. But as Fergus was actually saying before we came in for this panel, they gave away a ticket to the movie in the class, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which was also terrible. Like, which was also <laughs> terrible. Like, <laughs> was it a good adaptation of the source to see this movie because they thought people were going to race out and buy this game, man, and then we've got them in the theatre. Like, I don't, I don't know. So is it a good adaptation of the movie, but a bad adaptation of the book? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> 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 no, I don't think there was any good to come out of it. No, that was just like a, it was a project that had to get finished. Apparently, we need a game of this. Yeah. What would a good Da Vinci Code adaptation look like? I think it looks like a bit like Mist. Yeah. 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 Point and click adventure or something yeah. like that might work. Right. A Telltale yeah. style, yeah. Yeah. possibly. Yeah. What if I had guns? <laughs> I mean, I think somebody thought it was a good idea. No. It was 15 years too late, man. It would have been a lot easier if they had just shot that albino fella right up. Alright. Okay. Okay. So, Jess. Hi. Talk to me about Sherlock Holmes. Yes. And why they are or are not good adaptations. Well, I mean, what do you hope for in a Sherlock Holmes adaptation? So, I have some mixed feelings about the Sherlock Holmes games because I feel like they're good bad. It's like every time I play one, it's like almost there. Like it's, I see a mechanic and it's like, yeah, we're going to do this deduction thing where we're going to, you know, make you feel like Sherlock Holmes and you're going to be so smart. And then it's just not that. Um, <laughs> Are there guns? It's, but, mm, no, maybe. It's not a core mechanic. I, would, I will give the Sherlock Holmes collection this. Guns are not the main source of progressing the game. Like, you actually have to use your brain. Um, yeah, I feel like the, it's the same feeling I have about like Phoenix Wright, which is kind of a, not relevant to this, but it's that feeling where you're like, I know what's going on. I can solve this problem. And 
I'm not wrong, but I'm just not solving it in quite the way that it wants me to solve it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, no, no, I want you to link these two things that are almost the things you want to link, but are different by like a word. Or I want to link these two things, but I'm like a step ahead of where it wants to be. Mm -hmm. um, which kind of takes away from that super cool feeling that I think the Sherlock Holmes games are going for, which is like a, you're so smart, you can solve murder, like Sherlock Holmes. Um, yeah, so I, I think that, having said that, I think they're progressively getting better as time goes on. Um, I was saying before this, I have hope that by the time I'm, I don't know, 50, that they will have released a perfect Sherlock Holmes game. <laughs> um, some of them had some issues that I think were not related to the fact that they were Sherlock Holmes games, like the fact that uh, in one of them, Watson follows you around, but it just turns it into a horror game for no reason. <laughs> because you're like walking down a corridor and you just swing around and he's like right there. And he's like, hey Sherlock, can I help you? And you're like, please don't. This is um, a radical, you know, version of the material. Yeah. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes meets PT. Meets, yeah. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Yeah, he's like, hey Sherlock, I heard you want to solve some crimes. <laughs> No, no, that's okay, thank you. Um, yeah, that's so. the European death for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to go hang out with my beagle instead. That sounds much better. Um, um, yeah. So, so it sounds like what you're saying is like a big part of what makes a bad or good Sherlock uh, Holmes adaptation is about the way it can encapsulate that like fantasy of deduction and, yeah. solving, and solving things with your mind. Yeah. And when it doesn't actually convey that the way it should, it sort of falls apart. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like Sherlock Holmes, like, as novels, they're supposed to be, like, mystery novels, like, crime novels, mm. and you're supposed to kind of get some satisfaction out of finding out an answer and solving problems, and, yeah, if you can't do that well, then that kind of takes away from the, yeah. Mm. So, Kat, what have, you, what have you brought for me in terms of bad adaptations? Um, every Harry Potter game ever. <laughs> 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 I am, I'm not a massive Harry Potter fan. Uh, I'm going to put that out there right now. Mm -hmm. I loved the books as a kid, so playing the video games was like that kind of cool transition into a different medium to explore the books. But it just, <laughs> they fell so flat every single time. Wasn't one of them a cover shooter? <laughs> I think everything was a cover shooter at one point. <laughs> I feel like Goblet of Fire was a three player co op cover shooter in the style of Gears of War. Wow. <laughs> I don't want to play that. I, I mean, like, it could be one of the other many bad Harry Potter games. I don't want to pitch yeah. my yeah. stuff to that too. You yeah. should pitch that to Warner Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I just, um, I flat out did not like the way that they, because there's so much that happens in a in a Harry Potter book, right? Mm. You know, you've got all these uh, intricate relationships and, you know, as someone who's read the book and then you go to play the game, you're kind of like, oh, well, everything here yeah, sucks. Should it be a dating sim? <laughs> yes! <laughs> I think that's, that I would play. Yeah, it should that's be a dating the, sim. That's the correct way they should go. It should it. be a dating sim. Okay. Uh, a 3DS right. dating sim. Oh, yes! Yes, <laughs> 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 is just really Excuse me while well, I just stare off into the void and imagine that now. Yeah, and, uh, and all the artwork is horrible. The, the, the script agreed. is horrible. The narrative Double is agreed. horrible. The yeah. voice acting. The voice acting oh, is horrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's that one gnome throwing mini game that's like. Oh no! Don't remind me of that. I actually remember. That. I remember that as well. Yeah. Chamber of Secrets. It's like a flashback yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, it's the type like of game like, when your editor comes to you and says, "Hey, I've got this game to review." Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. What is it, Harry Potter? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did, you, did you ever play the GBA version of, I think it was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? I did, no. It was yes. a turn-based, like, Final Fantasy. Yeah, yeah. That would be so bad. No, I mean, it was... It was different bad. It was... <laughs> yeah. It was an interesting take on the formula, definitely. Yeah. It read, like, Phoenix Downs and stuff. Potential. Yeah. Yeah. Super it didn't really make sense, I guess, as an adaptation, but it was, <laughs> I think it was better -ish. It was like a little dungeon crawler or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. So, the elephant in the room, Lost is up there on the slides. <laughs> Has anyone played Lost via Domus? Good, <laughs> correct answer. Don't play this video game. It's I think it spoiled me for the show. I, well, it can't, it can't spoil you for the show. It's not canon. Well, it is, though, because part of it's like... I mean... Is this a spoiler alert? Yeah, but for, like, really early in the first season of Lost, right? Because I've only seen the first season and a half, so... 
Smart? Yeah. Um, <laughs> because I watched it for Evangeline Lilly. Anyway. Um, so, the, yeah. The, there's a bit at the beginning where they're like, yeah, you have to go, like, release Kate from her, um, handcuffs. Yes. But, yeah, like, yeah. you don't, they don't reveal that Kate's a prisoner until, like, quite a bit through the first season of, of Lost. Well, that's it's, true. It's, like, a yeah. thing. It's, like, fun. It's a whole reveal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Lost game, just really early, and it's like, oh, by the way, hey, just this thing. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay. So just describe it for, for the many people who smartly have avoided it. Uh, it's sort of like a third-person action-adventure game. Yeah. Is there there's no, there is, I don't think there's any because there's like one gun on the island at that point, yeah. Yeah. canonically. Do you get that one gun? You don't. Oh. Um, it's basically oh, you running right. around running errands for all the characters mm. on the show. Uh, so you're like Postman Pat. Yeah, you're sort of doing <laughs> stuff in the background. Yeah, yeah but and Postman Pat was followed by like Black Freaky Mist. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, I can't say for sure that he isn't, this, I guess. This is vivid. Um, <laughs> but like, it's one of those things where, as someone who like, quite loves Lost despite its many problems, mm. uh, it was a bit frustrating because a, it's, it's like it sort of intersects with the show, but sort of doesn't really, yeah. and it sort of falls apart on like this promise of you get to go and be in the uh, on the island and discover things and see what's happening in the background of certain episodes and see mm. things from a different perspective. But it kind of just falls apart on that because you just you don't really do that. Mm. You just see the events unfold from the show, but play no active role in them. Oh, sometimes uh, you walk around. Matter. And the black mist comes for you, and then you have to like hide in the trees. And everyone's like the banyan trees, and you're like, <gasps> and then you run and you hide in the banyan trees. Yeah, <laughs> accurate, very accurate. Also, half of the voice cast aren't there. Yeah, and it like completely <laughs> yeah. throws the whole thing out. And like faithfulness, I don't think is necessarily the most important thing in every adaptation. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing Lost the video game, and you're doing this like photorealistic aesthetic, and you're being woven into the fabric of the show. It's important that Locke does not sound, you know, like a Midwesterner. Like, <laughs> or Fergus, consider how many games have none of the voice cast no. and see it as a positive that half of them are kind of okay. <laughs> half of them needed the paycheck. Yeah. 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 Uh, Matthew, what do you what do you got? What do you got? I mean, bad video games. I wanted to talk about two games that weren't necessarily bad games, but kind of bad adaptations, and they were uh, the Bourne game from the Xbox 360 era, and the Wheel of Time game, which is quite a bit older. Um, Reactions to that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Bourne was a solid third-person cover shooter that didn't feel like Bourne at all. If, if you've read the Bourne books, they're very much spy novels. They're slow thrillers that burn. Uh, quite slowly, and then the movies are kind of these full-on action, in-your-face style movies, whereas the game doesn't hit either of those points. Uh, <laughs> being a cover shooter, everything stop, assess, shoot. It doesn't feel like you're Jason Bourne uh, from the movie. And then the slow burn of the spinals it isn't carried over into that style of gameplay either. So, and it didn't help that they had. They had very tentative links to the Bourne copyright, so they weren't they weren't allowed to use the movie likenesses. So you didn't have Jason Bourne. I think you had Nolan North. Um, just I'm guessing it's probably you Nolan North. Yes. <laughs> and they had permission from the Ludlam Estate, but not necessarily to use the original novels. So it's really murky. Uh, they kind of just created this quite solid third person. Uh, cover shooter and slapped Bourne's face on the front, um, or Nolan North's face on the front. Um, there are guns in it. Though, right? There are lots and lots of guns, but you don't have that. So I think everyone would agree when you watch the Bourne movies, a lot of it is that kind of shaky cam and, and the, the in your face fighting, and uh, there's none of that. It's slow, stop, pick your target, shoot, which it, it doesn't translate. If you'd have put Joe Bloggs's third person shooter on it, it would have been fine, but as a born translation, it wasn't very good. Uh, as for Wheel of Time, uh, anyone read Wheel of Time series, Robert Jordan? You know, quite a famous fantasy series. Well, at least the first seven books were good anyway. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, the game is essentially just uh, Heretic or Hexen or a, a first person shooter. I didn't know about this, but wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of, uh, the Robert Jordan books, there's a lot of different factions and, and you know, I think it's a probably a pers uh, predecessor to Game of Thrones sort of style novel um, and lots of uh, different collect groups and uh, people 
looking out for their own and, and following this grand story. None of that is in the game. You get <laughs> fancy magic spells to throw at people. Uh, and the game is, as a Hexen game, is a fun first-person shooter, but once again, just not capturing what you want out of an adaptation for a game. Uh, I don't know about anyone else, but I, I want to feel like I'm a part of something that I've enjoyed previously with an adaptation. So I enjoyed the Robert Jordan books, but this in no way made me feel like I was a part of that world. And, and that's where I think it was the biggest failure. So it wasn't a bad game as such, but as an adaptation, it, it failed quite spectacularly. I, I think there's definitely a similarity lost in that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, speaking of epic fantasies and adaptations there, uh, one game that I do actually think a series that is actually quite good is the Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War games from Ooh. a couple years ago. Those games are quite fun, um, but as an adaptation of like Tolkien's work, they're like a, a bit weird. Um, is that the one that has the sexy spider? Sexy yeah. spider. Right? Yeah, the sexy spider thing. Uh, the sexy Sauron. Uh -huh. There's like... There's a lot of sexy. Yeah. There's a lot of everyone sexy. Very sexy game. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> We're back to play. It's, it's just very, it's very strange. There was a great piece I remember when the first one came out, uh, I think it was on Polygon, uh, about how, whereas other Lord of the Rings games, like the movie game for Return of the King, or Battle for Middle Earth, they're all about embracing that and heightening that like epic fantasy uh, of the movies. Yeah. This one is sort of like, what if Lord of the Rings, but you're like a counter-terrorist guerrilla agent behind enemy lines, slowly picking away their lines of communication and, you know, leadership structure and turning agents against the larger enemy. That's for sure what I think of yeah. I think of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It's like, in addition to messing with the lore in, in yeah. all these weird and interesting ways, it's just very antithetical to like the classical heroism. I it works it works quite well as a game though, and, and those um, nemesis Mm, totally. um, systems are really quite fantastic in how they work and your interactions mm. with these orc chiefs. But yeah, I, I think that the funny part is the the adapting of uh, Tolkien's work is uh, a stretch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it fits the game, not necessarily. I, I know a few people that are mad rings fans and. I think they were personally injured uh, by sexy spiders. Yeah, a sexy spider. I mean, it feels at times like it's you know how they did the Empire strips back and all oh. those burlesque versions of Star Wars. It feels like the burlesque version of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> There's no guns though. No guns. No guns. No. There There's a grappling hook in one of those DLCs, though. That's pretty close to a grappling hook. Yeah. yeah. There's arrows. Yeah, yeah. Lots of arrows. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to recall. Are we ever done all the bad things? Or are we ready yeah. to move on to good? Well, I don't have a good Unless one. Has, okay. So I'd like yeah. to add another bad Go. one. Go. Let's do it. Cool. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about the Grey's Anatomy video game. <laughs> 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 You're probably wondering why I've invited you all back. <laughs> Tell me about the Grey's Anatomy video Don't game. tell me about it. <laughs> no, you need to hear it. So, well, you can hear it now or you can play it by yourself. So, you pick. They are your only options. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> That's why it's in the bad section. Like, yeah. let's be clear. I, I love Grey's Anatomy. The show, not the game. Um, it's an absolute trash fire. It's like drama to the nines, ridiculous. And I'm like five seasons behind, but like, you know, it's a ridiculous time. Um, the show. Um, the game tried to be all the things that the show was, I think. Um, but it tried to be too many things and also none of the things. So it's you kind of. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so there are aspects where you're, you know, playing the familiar characters of Grey's Anatomy that are not familiar to all of you, clearly, but were to me at the time. Um, and it, there are mechanics about like make this choice and it'll either save their relationship or like make them psychologically well. So it's or, a dating sim. Well, yes, and then no, not enough. Like I wanted it to be more of a dating sim. Can you just like ruin everyone's life? Yeah, I mean, I would love to. Um, but that was only on one of the mechanics. Hi there. Because they're surgeons, right? They work in a hospital. Can you fuck up a surgeon? Well, yeah. <laughs> so. Can you show your watch? The rest of the um, the gameplay is like um, I can't think of what the actual game is called because I can only think about amateur surgeon, which is like the takeoff one. I always understood it to be like, like, like a yeah. Uh, 
point and click, right? It's earlier than that. It's like a point and click kind yeah. of tra trauma center? Trauma oh, center. Trauma center. Um, yeah, so it's half sort of dating sim, half life or death situations like, are you going to ruin this person's life or nah? Um, <laughs> but, like, are you literally going to ruin this person's life by accidentally cutting open the wrong artery? Appropriate um, gravitas. Yeah. yeah. And it was terrible. Like, it was, it was bad. You, you sound shocked that it was <laughs> Maybe I'm too filled with hope and optimism. It was given to me as a gift, which I guess says something about what my friends think of me and my interests. I'm so sorry. <laughs> By my partner at the time. So I was like, you really knew thanks, you. I hate it. Um... Yeah. How soon after that did you break up? Just curiously. Uh, no, <laughs> she, and we're still together and it's been 10 years. Wow. <laughs> That's commitment. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's worth noting that at the time I was about 18. Oh. Yeah, um, so it was early in our relationship. Um, that's an interesting and foundation for the hill for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, so it's a bit of a different game. It's not, you know, the epic fantasy time slash spy thriller that everybody else is talking it's about. Fun. But it turns out you can mess up every genre um, just as badly. What would have made it good? Well, <laughs> you know, I've spent 10 years thinking about it. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. If you have to pick one genre, I think it... Dating sim. Dating sim. Yeah, I think it needed to be dating sim. <laughs> or hard-hitting surgery game. But I, what if... Guns. <laughs> <laughs> guns. Luckily, compared to the amount of guns that are in actual Grey's Anatomy, there weren't any. No. There were, there were no guns. To the best of my knowledge, there was a viral outbreak. Uh huh. How many bullets? Because of course there's actually gun shot No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, well, usually at least once a season, there's someone running mad with a gun in yeah. the hospital. So, like, you expect it. <laughs> so it it failed to meet those expectations. So yeah, I mean, I guess it wasn't in any way good at all. Unfaithful. Unfaithful to the stellar <laughs> source material. But can you make a bad game out of bad source material? Uh, <laughs> yes. Or is it just at level? Yeah, because it wasn't even good in the way that Grey's yeah. Anatomy is good to like make up for the fact that it's bad. Like it needs to be trash consistently. <laughs> <laughs> Like <laughs> Next up, days of our lives. <laughs> the like dating a, sim. I think I'm pitching Riverdale the Telltale Adventure game. Oh my god, do you know how bad that would like oh oh <laughs> Can you imagine how crazy it could be mystery. with no Hard real production sim. budget? Yeah. Yes. Like they don't have to obey the laws of physics. No! Do you know how good that would be? That game could have everything. You'd have like Cheryl with her bow. Like, I don't know how many people watch Riverdale in here, but clearly I do. I'm <laughs> obviously showcasing my amazing taste in television. Yeah, like Cheryl with a bow walking around murdering people. Oh no, another murder. Oh no, there's gang tensions. It has everything. You could join a gang. You could join a gang. With guns. <laughs> you brought it up as a joke, but now... I did. Oh, I thought this was a real thing happening. No. <laughs> I got really excited for this. That's why I don't make it. I don't make games. Isn't that a bit archie? I'll learn. No. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I also don't watch your name, but they, I read like an occasional synopsis and go, yeah, that sounds Archie's crazy. There. I have mm. Archie vs. Predator. Nice. Oh, That's awesome. Really cool. Oh, it's awesome. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, serious yeah. yeah. So, we've talked about the bad and identified some of the missteps and ways in which are, you know, iconic classics like The Da Vinci Code and, <laughs> Grey's Anatomy. and The Grey's Anatomy video game went wrong. Let's talk about uh, adaptations that we think are good. So we got a bunch of ones up here that have guns in them, which... <laughs> um, Clearly, the sign of a video game. <laughs> David, talk to me about a good adaptation. Okay. Um, so the one I'm going to talk about today is uh, Spec Ops The Line. Um, Have people played Spec Ops The Line? Yes. Yeah. If you haven't, there's a video please game. Please jump on it. Um, it it sort of got uh, forgotten when it came out um, because there were so many military shooters at the time. It does look very um, generic. It does. Um, that was one of its big drawbacks. Was it looked super generic? It's uh, sort of a um, it's an indirect adaptation of uh, Heart of Darkness, which has been adapted again and again and again and again um, in different forms, but this one used uh, its adaptation of the material to be a military shooter that is about military shooters. Um, it's 
thinking a lot about what you're actually doing when you're playing one of these games, why you're doing it. It's got a lot um, to say about um, mental health, post-traumatic stress, um, trauma under fire, these sorts of things. Um, and I can't remember the last time I played a military shooter that really dove into them the way that this one does. Um, and still uses the twist ending, like if you know how Heart of Darkness ends, um, this one ends the same way. Uh, and it hits you differently because it's interactive. Um, you can watch Apocalypse Now, another adaptation of it, um, and it's because it's a movie, it's a passive medium, right? So you hit the twist at the end of the movie and you understand it, you see where it came from. When you're playing Spec Ops The Line, it's happening to you. Um, it's a different thing. I, I really loved it. It's like 12 bucks on Steam. Please give it a go. Yeah. What it did too, uh, it, like I said, it's a very gen generic looking shooter. It's, it's once again that Gears of War formula where you're playing with the, the cover, cover based action and all that. And so it starts off with this very kind of unassuming, hey, I'm going to be Ruha America. He, uh, no, 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 sort of, is in this Yes, no, no, <laughs> he's, he's, he's the main guy again. Um, and then you get to this point, and I'm not going to ruin it for anyone that hasn't played the game, because I agree, go out and play yeah, it. Yeah, let's play it. Uh, there's this one point when you realise something that I don't think I've ever played a shooter that has hit me like this emotionally in this one point. And anyone who's played it will know what I'm talking about. Um, but you get there and, and it's all of, like, all of a sudden this game has whole new meaning and you see that this is more than just shooting, this is more than just getting to the objective. This is it's got something really important to say about the American uh, army using themselves as a police force. It's got things to say about how we treat the third world. It's got things to say about how soldiers cope in these situations. And it does it in such a way that you don't even realise that you're getting these stories, you're getting these lessons from the game. It, it is a fantastic bit of writing and it's a crying shame that it, it isn't remembered more than it is. Yeah, fully agree. I will just quickly jump in and defend. It does look very generic, yes. but uh, the setting for the game is actually in this version of Dubai that's completely buried under a, like a monolithic sand, sandstorm. Mm. And I, I always remember the visuals of that actually being quite striking in, in action. And they had like a mechanic in it where if you'd shoot glass, like sand would burst yeah. through and flood an area and like throw enemies off and stuff. Um, do we have any spec ops observations from that end of the table? I haven't played it. That's okay. I'm not a big shooter. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Big um, guns fan. Yeah, no. <laughs> yes. Me neither. But um, I will say that it has been used um, in one of the psychology courses that I teach um, as an interesting example to bring up when people are having this annoying age-old debate of like, oh, do video games make people more violent? Yes. Which is a thing that comes up a lot in psych. Um, yeah, and it's it's brought up as an interesting example of like, he is kind of the foil to yeah. that. Um, mm. Yeah. All right, uh, Kat, tell me about a good adaptation. Um, so I have a sociology background, so I went with a philosophical piece, mm -hmm. and I chose um, Bioshock's uh, like inspired by Atlas Shrugged by yeah, I can't say Ayn Rand. Yeah. <laughs> So it's more about talking, uh, I think they kind of visualise what she's saying in Literal, Literalise it almost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you still have the same protagonists um, and antagonists. Mm. So it's... Um, uh, Fontaine? Or the other one. Uh, right, one. Sinclair? <laughs> no. Right. No, uh, right, yeah, no, but on yeah. the other end of the spectrum. Um, Gone, Gout. Just yes. Gout. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, and it's kind of like how you're playing against, you know, Andrew Ryan's paranoia and mm. um, his conspiracies and whatever. Um, so that's really reflected from Atlas Shrugged and all the different, uh, you know, saving the creatives and yeah. I really, I have, I've read Atlas Shrugged once. <laughs> it's one of those books that I think you, you might don't really need to, do, need to do a reread. It's like uh, Ulysses on this. But it was really cool to see like a philosophical piece being brought into a video game. Totally. Really it's definitely a different video. direction to pull from, I think. And that's yeah. why I think it's one of the things that mm -hmm. made, made it so yeah. striking and impressionistic. Well, in um, Atlas Shrugged, they are in a hideaway kind of um, 
like behind a rock, I think. And there, that's where John Galt has taken all these people to be saved, and that's what Rapture is. Yeah. Is where Andrew Ryan was taking all these well, the creative, the talented people, the, the talented, <laughs> innovators the, of the world. Yeah. You know, and yeah. um, so it's kind of yeah. the same. And a lot of Andrew Ryan's scripting is very much so ad living. Yeah, yeah, and it's actually quite interesting because I've read a few pieces where they do compare. The, uh, the script and, okay. and it's really yeah it's really cool cool so I really uh, it occurs to me that Bioshock is actually kind of old have people play yeah. Bioshock <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh it's, uh, it's very old it's old now that's so strange <laughs> um, you go to the bottom of the ocean it's it's great you should you should play, you should play. <laughs> <laughs> if you like a uh, more dystopian thriller kind of yeah stuff. very dystopian vibe very great aesthetic yeah as well. It, um, yeah, I've played it a lot, and it still gives me very unsettling feelings playing that, so... Yeah. Don't read out the Yeah, probably. You, pro you can probably skip Just, that one. We can hear it if you want. It's <laughs> academically interesting. Yes. I did have to read it for class. Most of it really recommended. Yeah. Um, Matthew, what are you going to talk about? Metro. Metro. Have people played Metro? Metro is awesome. Yeah. More people played Metro than Bioshock. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, Metro is awesome. <laughs> uh, I love the Metro games, uh, and uh, they're obviously from a studio that doesn't quite have the money that, that some of the big AAAs do, but what they, you know, they've got a little bit of jank, you know, and there's, there's a few issues with them generally when they come out. All the games have had a few bugs and stuff, but what they do so well is create atmosphere, and if you've read the Metro books, they are dark, they are progressing, fantastic reads, but like you've got to be in a state of mind to read them. If, if, if you weren't feeling good about life, I wouldn't recommend reading <laughs> Metro because holy shit, you'd go down a dark hole. Have people read the Metro books? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've got a few. Um, so Metro 23, three, three, sorry, uh, the first game uh, and based on a Russian book and it's set in the Russian uh, Metro tunnels after apocalypse essentially, uh, nuclear war and humanity surviving under there and what it does is creates these tensions between rival groups there's there's nazis there's communists there's these rangers that act as almost like the police force i guess for the tunnels uh and and along with that there's a lot of guilt and um i guess consequences from the nuclear fallout with with the dark ones and uh how they all interact and and how all the factions play against each other it, it's something that very few games manage to do in, in that perspective, in that first person perspective. And uh, it, it plays, while it's a shooter, I guess, at heart, it, to me it feels more like a, an adventure game in the way it handles story, in a way, you know, you walk into these settlements in the, in the tunnels and you immediately feel for how these people are, are living and how these people are uh, surviving under here and, and it becomes a barter economy and, and ammo is now your um, currency uh, with stores so if you can get pre-war ammo it's it's worth a lot more than the, the, the homemade scraps that you, you kind of use in, in your gunfights. Um, everything has this kind of homemade feel of, of a group of people that are just barely hanging on and yet somehow humanity still has this need to really balls thing up balls things up with Nazis and you know hate groups and and how how they interact with everyone so I think that I, I struggle to think of a game that's captured a novel better than than, than the Metro series they, they've done really really well I mean we'll obviously talk about the Witcher um, <laughs> but yeah I think it does a better job than the Witcher actually of adapting the the source material. The, the author's actually relationship with the games is actually quite interesting, different to the relationship between uh, Sprowski and The Witcher as well, nice. in that he kind of allows, a, like, he, from my understanding, you, like, he just canonizes fanfic. Yeah, pretty much. Right, like a Metro story, and he's like, cool, that's great, it's canon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he loves it. And goes, he's like, cool, it's real now. He, he really digs it. I remember uh, yeah. talking to friends of mine that went on a press tour for Metro last night, and they took them to Russia into some abandoned tunnels and all that. Wow. And they said, it, it's horrible, but it was a really amazing experience. <laughs> <laughs> so they went on this press junket and went through the tunnels and, and they had 
in an open space in the tunnels, they had the game set up for them to play. And, oh my yeah, God. it was creepy as <laughs> shit. <That's laughs> <too much. laughs> you know, too they also provided psychology afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Metro, wonderful. Yes. Jess, hi. Do you have a good adaptation to go with? I actually did. I've actually been thinking about it All just right. in the last, you know, ten minutes. Um, <laughs> and I realised it's actually a really obvious one. Yeah. Um, and it's Spider Man. Oh! <laughs> um, which is a super great game. Like, I loved the Spider Man game that came out yeah. um, last year. Last year? Last year. People play this? Um, yes. yes. Yeah. Alright, we've got some, some people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you guys play games? One of the biggest brands on the planet. Just check it. Like. <laughs> um, for the record, I really liked the Spider Man Spider Man 2. Adaptation, I think, of the film, yeah. the PS2 mm. slash GameCube, I think. The PC yeah. version was not very yeah. good. Okay, well, the GameCube there. one went off. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, weirdly, I would think it it seems like an oddly hard thing to get right, the feeling of, like, swinging mm. as Spider-Man, and yet I've now played two games that did that incredibly well. Yeah. Um, because obviously that's what I, I mean, personally, I think about when I think about Spider-Man. It's like I want to be able to, like, traverse the city in a fun, mm. swingy way. Um, yeah, and I think that often it's the case that adaptations are not great. Mm. Um, because I think, particularly when they're big brands um, like Marvel games, they don't necessarily have to be great yeah. for people to buy play. them, yeah. right? Um yeah, so when I played Spider-Man, I was genuinely surprised by how full it felt and how much it hit on everything that I think it needed to as a Spider-Man I've heard they do game. some interesting stuff with the characters and relationships in that game, like J. Jonah Jameson is a podcast? Podcast, yes. yes. Which is like, ch choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like the real obnoxious podcast that yeah. you know. <laughs> And like, like yeah. MJ is a fully formed character that you get to actually play and she has like agency and does things that are super cool because she's super cool. And that is important to the, um, you know, to bringing that kind of stuff from a comic book or from a movie over to a game as well. You, I can't play an adaptation where I'm not going to be involved with the characters or be involved with the environments because I've built this idea already in my head and if that game doesn't deliver then it's just such a disappointment mm -hmm. and so I try to really steer clear of anything that I've read that's been adapted into a game or a movie. Yeah, yeah particularly with books because you create such a vivid world in your head. Yeah, absolutely. And it makes it very hard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're, we're being very critical but I'm sure <laughs> it's really hard to, yeah. to, to get right. nail that. Yeah. Um, yes, that's what I thought of it. Alright. Very good. David, what have you got? Um, you have more, right? I had a couple. You had a couple. Um, so, basically, um, we were going to talk about The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead! Well. Have you ever played The Walking Dead? There was a few, actually. Like, Telltale okay. was, Telltale yeah. Rest in Peace, was um, sort of the premier studio for adaptations, um, be they from literature, from TV, from film. Um, the Walking Dead was obviously like the most one, popular, the, the most popular one that they're thing. the most well known for. Um, came from a comic series, obviously. Um, that first season in particular, I think that's the box for it. There um, is basically the best one, in my opinion. Mm. Um, yeah. It never quite. I really enjoyed the Wolf. Oh, oh, I was going to get oh, to that. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just specifically just the Walking Dead, Dead series. Walking Dead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Just within Absolutely. the Walking Dead series, yeah. I thought the first season was probably the best of a lot. The Walking, um, yeah, uh, The Wolf Among Us is probably my favourite. The Wolf Among Us is a gorgeous thing um, right now. Yeah, Has anyone actually story. read the... I've read a little bit. I've read a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 the Williams. Yeah. Um, there's a lot. Yeah. Like, it's a it's long, very intimidating. Like, like if you if you if you haven't started reading that book, there's a lot to get through. That was um, amazing. That. It's a yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Better story. than um, um, Shrek, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's all about fairy tale characters who um, live in the real world and conceal their identities within this small conclave. And it's um, not very good. Yeah, it's, it's bad. Yeah, the real world. Yeah, is they don't bad. like being there. They don't like it one bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great. The game itself focuses on uh, one character from the comics, Bigby Wolf, um, and is attempting to solve a murder, basically. Uh, it's 
brilliant. The less I say about the plot, the better, um, because once you get into it, it'll start to yeah unravel itself before you. And you'll have a really good time figuring out what exactly is happening in this story. I was absolutely gutted when uh, Telltale closed down and they had to cancel yeah. that second season. I know the second I, season. I was really looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. Are they still are the Telltale stuff still available on Steam if you haven't purchased them? Some of them, I think it's a the it's Telltale a rights by rights really thing. Boring, yeah, but they've lost the rights then, yeah. to some of the stuff. Some. I, I'm not sure if Wolf Among Us was one of them or. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was trying to find a copy of uh, Game of Thrones mm. by Telltale a while ago and yeah. proved a bit. I know it had a so. physical release, so if you were able to track it down on PS3 yeah. or Xbox 360, you'll be able to find it there. But digitally, yeah. probably going to be a challenge. So what what made uh, what made the Telltale stuff, I guess? compelling as an adaptation to you. Um, what, work, what works about it? Why, why are you like, this is a good adaptation of this comic? It's still right. about, uh, fundamentally they got the tone of it mm-hmm. correct, um, which is, it is a fairly dark comic, but it's also darkly humorous. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, um, yeah, that's that's the that's very the saturated color. Very, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if they were able to do something really stylistic with the, mm-hmm. the visuals as well. Um, yeah, they just, they captured it perfectly. Like, when I'm reading that comic book and I'm playing that game, it feels of a piece. Mm-hmm. Definitely there's like a consistency in tone, which I think yeah. is like very important yeah, to a lot of adaptations. Yeah. And I definitely see it there. Uh, Kat, I feel like I skipped you. Tell me no, a good adaptation. Did I skip we, we talked about Bioshock. Oh, we did. Yeah. We did. <laughs> oh, I can talk about Symmetra. Oh, you oh, do one. Oh, what have I got? All right, have people played a game that came out earlier in the year called Elsinore or Elsinore? Yes! Alright, <laughs> so, uh, Elsinore is a indie Thanks. game. Tell me about Elsinore. It was uh, kickstarted uh, a while ago, but it's basically a Hamlet simulator. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. well, I've played a few weird adaptations of Hamlet in my time. There is one called To Be or Not To Be, and it's like a point, it's yes. like a multiple choice. That's like that at school? Yeah! <laughs> yeah! When I was, I mean, being very academically successful, but also playing To Be or Not To Be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like a text game. It's we. It's it's, awesome. it's a, yeah. Game. It's a fun little thing. Yeah. But also, it takes that one step further, where uh, you play as Ophelia, who's sort of Hamlet's love interest in the Shakespeare play. Uh, for those who haven't seen it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, basically, you play as Ophelia, and then you sort of live through the events of Hamlet. And in the play, Ophelia kills herself about two thirds through. Uh, and so you approach that point in the story, and then a hooded figure shows up and is like, well, they're going to find your body and think you killed yourself, and just gets you. And then Ophelia wakes up at the start of the play, remembering what's happened, and it's a Groundhog Day-style situation. Oh, wow. And you have to, you have to live through the events of Hamlet over and over again until you can talk people or, like, cause events to happen in a way that stops you from dying and then tries to resolve the play. It wasn't long enough. And so... <laughs> it's... It's have you ever seen the Kenneth Branagh version? It's, it's like genuinely oh. one of my favourite games I've it's played this year. It's David Tennant. But you, it's so yeah. interesting. Oh no, the David Tennant one's very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, as an adaptation of Hamlet, it's absolutely fascinating because you get uh, a sense of 3D space to the scene. So you can walk in and like see uh, a scene happen between Hamlet and uh, Ophelia. No, Ophelia. Someone else. Hamlet and uh, Bernardo. They'll talk about a thing and that scene might be in the play, but while that's happening, you can go to a different part of the castle and see what two other characters are doing and what scenes are happening there. And um, you just get this real sense of space and you, it gives you such a vivid construction of Hamlet and what it's about and what the characters are actually about and getting that extra depth and seeing things from different perspectives. It's what I would want from that Lost video game, honestly. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, as an adaptation, it explores all of the things that Hamlet does, but because you get to spend a lot more time in it and a lot more time in the place and with the characters, it hits so much higher. Um, I have to recommend it enough, and I think it's absolutely fascinating adaptation. Mm-hmm. Just gonna make myself a little note, but like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, Cat, back to you. Give me a good adaptation. What oh. else you got? Oh. Um. I don't know. Should we talk about The Witcher? I think we should talk about The Witcher. I, 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 well, in that case, I have one more thing I want to get into with David before we move on to The Witcher, Ooh, which will be discussed. Yeah. Uh, David, mm-hmm. both you and I have played John Wick Hex <laughs> over the last couple of weeks for review. Yeah. Is it a good adaptation? <laughs> <laughs> Again, tonally, I think, yeah. It's, yeah. It is uh, very Wolf Among Us in terms of style yeah, as well, actually. Yeah, well, it's Have people played this new game? It's quite, I think it came out a few days ago, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, um, so it's based on John Wick, the movies. Keanu Reeves, it's great. Yeah. Um, 
But rather than be like an action shooter, there are guns in it, which is good. Uh, <laughs> rather than be like a really fast action shooter, they turn it into a, a turn-based strategy game. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Yeah, it's, it's question, like, sort of asterisk. It's like sort of turn-based, but sort of not. Yeah. It's oh. more like um, super hot. Combined yeah. yeah. With XCOM. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. Like, so you just... plot a move and then you John executes the move, probably executes a person, and yeah. then the whole world moves around him. Yeah. There was a series of mobile games a couple of years ago called Lara Croft Go and Hitman Go, and this yeah. is very similar to that. Oh. Um yeah, okay. like and on paper that sounds great, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh wow, I can see a John Wick. What was it like executed? It's yeah. So you know how John Wick, like the thing that's great about John Wick is that he like Perfectly executes 100% of the time and just like takes out 50 guys, it's fine. You yeah. can't do that. No, I can't do that. that. It's very <laughs> hard. It's, it's like very <laughs> difficult. Yeah. Uh, and it takes like a lot of trial and error to actually kind of get that desired result. Yeah. They do have a cool feature in it where when you finish a level, you hit a button and then it will play it in like a cinematic yes. cut as super if it was a scene from the movie. Yeah, super hard. Yeah. yeah, in real time, which is quite cool. But it's interesting because I think totally, uh, and apart from I think Keanu himself, they have all the voice actors. From the movie, which does make it feel very consistent. Mm -hmm. It's got a very cool art style, which I think definitely. Uh, I think John Wick has like a lot of influence on like from like graphic novels. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. and that's very much carried right. over yeah. into Hex. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about The Witcher. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> We've only got ten minutes left. I know. I'm sure we're probably going to do this. Funny we, we should have started The Witcher. All right, let's, the let's go. Let's go down. Let's go down the line. <laughs> Jess, is The Witcher a good adaptation of the books? I haven't read the books. Oh. Are they incredibly sexist? Yes. <laughs> then yeah. Siri's <laughs> <laughs> cool. I like Siri. Yeah, she's, she's cool she's, in the books. She's pretty cool in the books. Yeah. Okay, she goes yeah. and hangs out with King Arthur in the books, actually. <laughs> Great. Uh, there's a lot more dimension <laughs> popping into <laughs> Um. Okay. Well, then, what, what's your what's what's your vibe on the Witcher TV show that's coming up? How's that changed your perspective on the books? Right? Are um, you going to see the TV show as an adaptation of the books or an adaption of the Games. Well, having not read the books, um, my feeling watching the trailer was uh, Roach is a good horse. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good boy. Yes, yeah. Roach wasn't stuck on the roof either. Yeah. So it's all very unfair. Very unfair. They're not true to the game, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. They're yeah. not playing Winch as well. Yeah. Very I, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm remaining open minded about okay. the TV show. Um, I don't necessarily know if it's going to be an adaptation of either. I think it might try to be something different. I kind of hope it does. Mm. Um, it would be cool if it was an adaptation of the book so that I don't have to read them. I've actually tried it twice before and it was hated. Books. Yeah, no, there was a very bad adaptation of the books. To, I only knew about one, but... There was a TV series and they tried to do a direct-to-TV movie. I've oh, seen, well, I've seen pictures. Those are always good. Oh, they're personally hated by everyone. It's yeah. yeah. It, so I it's only up for me. Yeah. 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 Are people excited? Are people interested in the Witcher TV show? Yeah. 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 Oh, solid medium. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So, Kat, what are your thoughts on the Witcher? Have you read the books? No. All right. Cool. I've the game. Love it. I yeah. had it actually... Very helpful. I know. <laughs> did you drop the... Did you do research for this panel? It's, yes. it's, only, it's only 120 hours long. I'm authentic though, I'm not going to like... Yeah. Also, <laughs> way good for yeah, who would do that? <laughs> um, I had it installed in my computer, thanks to yeah. the lovely guys at Bandai who mm -hmm. gave me a code, and uh, mm -hmm. I forgot about it. <laughs> yes. Come to come Switch soon, you can play it. I had Borderlands, because it had guns. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> guns. No guns in The Witcher. There's there's no, there are no guns in The Witcher, so... A... Is it a good adaptation? I am a fan of that style of game, so I, can we, can I just, can we talk about it next year? Yeah, sure. Like I'll play sure. it, watch the TV show, and read the books before next year. If I'm the only one who's done the readings, I might jump in. <laughs> am I the only one who's read yeah. the books? Alright, let's do it. Alright, have people read the books? One. Yes, one person. <laughs> two. One, we got two. two. Oh, okay. okay. Alright, so the books are really weird, and the way they connect to the games, for those who have only played the games, uh, is also a bit weird, in that at the end of the... Is this a spoiler? Can I talk? These books are really old, and so you find a question mark. Anyway, uh, so the end of the book series, everyone kind of just gets killed by a lynch mob. Oh, right. Oh. And then at the start of the first game... Yeah, oh, like, presume, presume dead. And then at the start of the first game, you, you wake up in like a field of dead bodies, and you're like, whoa, that was weird. And then you kind of have to. Yeah, that means you're in this weird. Yeah, kind of. Like, like, oh, like, this is they sort of 
put the games after the books, but also they kind of don't. It's, it's, from it's been, from it's been, been yeah. like, not, it doesn't sync up and stuff, does yeah, it? Yeah, no, it's, it's a bit weird. Like, there's events, there's stuff that is canon, stuff that is weirdly yeah. rearranged or not canon or rewritten. Like, in the books, uh, not Yennefer, who's the other one? Triss. Triss is much more of like a figure in series life as like a maternal figure, and then in the games they sort of retcon uh, it a little bit and make Yennefer a lot more prominent. Mm. Um, and also I would say that the, the Witcher books as well, they go to a lot more places. Like there's just a section of the story where Siri like goes to like this desert sort of Arabia inspired region of the world and becomes like a bandit. And it's like a lesbian love interest. It's like a whole thing. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I'm reading the book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's that one called? What's that one? Yeah. That's, I think that, Chat and I would like to read that one. Um, <laughs> it's also it's also very weird if you if you do go into the books after playing the games because like in in the games, uh, series like whole heritage is is like pretty upfront in the yeah. third game in terms of like uh, her relationship to Emery Van Emerys and like all yeah. the stuff. In the books, it's like a massive reveal. Like it's a big, like big deal. It's not just a R plus L equals uh, J plus L equals R. R plus L equals J. Thing. It's like a big, big reveal. And then when I was reading the books, I was like, "Yeah, hey, come on, let's go." I know that he's coming, know it's coming up. Let's go. Let's do it. Um, and I think as well in in the books, you get so books set up a lot of the flavor that I think the game sort of took uh, in a different direction or like made their own thing. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting, uh, the Thronebreaker, which came out, I believe, last year, is like the Gwent single player experience. Yep. Uh, there is a section of that which is a just straight adaption of some stuff in the book, uh, where which is about Geralt running into Queen Maeve of somewhere? Is that I'm forgetting? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, it's how he gets the name Geralt of Rivia, basically. And it's like, it's like a big gag in the book, basically. Uh, he just goes around calling himself Geralt Ger of Rivia, kind of just just because it sound good, and then eventually he just gets he gets knighted Geralt of Rivia, and he's like, oh, okay, cool. well that makes sense. It was already a thing. Yeah, it was already a thing. It's cool. <laughs> um, so there is definitely like the relationship with the Witcher and the Sorcerer, I think, is like really complex and weird. Uh, but I think it is almost. I think it is in some ways like it. It, it kind of takes a lot of the stuff in the source material further in in a bunch of directions that are really interesting, and I would have loved to. See the books be better. <laughs> yes, that's what I like heard. I've heard the, the, the story in the game is actually, especially the third game. The third game, I would yeah. say, I could see it. Um, yeah. The second game is so, such a weird game. Um, I, I really enjoyed I, the second game. The, th the first game is a bit, very very rough story, yeah. but I kind of it's kind of endearing in how uh, old school it is. Like, like stupid combat system. Yeah, they, they like, built it on the Neverwinter Nights mod engine. Yeah, like it's unbelievable that game is like functional and kind of good. Yeah, not not really about modern standards, but I still find a lot of joy going back to it. Um, but yeah, which is just very interesting. Like some characters I think are adapted better than others. Some places are adapted better than others. Some plot lines are adapted better than others. But also has the weird undercurrent of is this canon? Mm. <laughs> Don't think too much about it. Yeah. And so yeah. that's the opposite to what you guys were saying about the metro stuff, where oh definitely if yeah. you wrote, oh yeah it's canon yeah. cool that's fine. Whereas the author of The Witcher is definitely not like that at all. No, no, no. his work. No, he's a bit cranky. Yeah, a bit cranky. Yeah. Yeah. A bit cranky. Oh, okay. He missed the payload, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> sold it for well, cheap loser. and didn't like the deal. Yeah. The whole thing, whole thing. David, do you have any thoughts on The Witcher? I love The Witcher. Um, <laughs> yeah, The Witcher 3 is my favourite game. Um, I, I actually, I didn't think there was an embargo on it. I just got my review code for the Switch version this morning. I'm going to have to yeah, you know, check you for details. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to jump into that tonight uh, and see how we go. I've oh, already how big is that download from the eShop? It's about 45 gigs. Oh. 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 Yeah. Gets going. I saw some 512 meg ones on special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I had some stuff to fit that one on there. Yeah, it's the Game Gear Edition, so it's all, all the existing yeah. content. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, um, yeah, very interested to jump into that and play it again. I've spent a thousand hours on this thing and I'm ready to go again on the Switch, basically. Yeah, yeah, this is one of my favourite game adaptations of all time. He just posted on how many rooftops Roach is on. Please, Roach, 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 Roach,
All right, well then, we have about five minutes left, so I just wanted to leave us on a, a bit of a fun exercise. Yeah. What would you do? Given an unlimited budget, what property or work of fiction would you adapt into a video game? What form would it take to develop it? And could it be commercially viable? The last one's optional. Ah. <laughs> you have an unlimited budget, so why do you... Yeah, it doesn't matter. I know what I'm doing. All right. I'm doing like a Witcher 3 scale version of Dune. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like end-to-end, -end, I, just, I just want to explore that world. That's what I want. Yep. 100%. I have no idea who would develop it. I don't know if it would be commercially viable. I just know so I want it. <laughs> you need it. It's fine. The question is not about anyone else. It's yeah. just about you. Yeah. Um, there is a uh, yeah. Let's do that. There's a tabletop RPG of June coming out next year. Around Ooh, the yeah, interesting. Can I play Timothy Chalamet? Huh? Can I play Timothy Chalamet? <laughs> 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 I want the Mistborn. Yes. Uh, yes. Have you read Mistborn? Have you read Brendan uh. Sanderson's books? He's the guy that actually finished off Wheel of Time, so funnily enough. But the Mistborn books are tell these people that uh, in, in this world where people consume different metals and these metals give them power. So, And most people that have this ability can only consume one metal. Uh, the Mistborn are people that consume all 16 of the metals. So it's kind of almost pre-made for a, an RPG where you could... There was, there was a video game adaption in the works for ages, but yeah, it, and it, it kind was of sort of everywhere. Yeah. yeah, but they're really, really cool. And, and the way Sanderson's written them, it's super flexible because he's got a couple of different time periods and he's actually talked about doing some set in the future. Some yeah, set no, there's like the, in like the 80s. Well, yeah, it's, I, it's less... Uh, the timeline of Mistborn is weird, yeah. but it's more like aesthetics, right? So the original series is like fantasy, fantasy. And then there was the and then kind of 1900s, New, 1900s York. New York, like Western inspired yeah. trilogy, which is quite, uh, quite a trilogy actually. The fourth one is yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, that was quite that was quite good. And he's talked about doing future stuff. Yeah, I love Mistborn. I would love a Mistborn video game. I think, I think it's almost it's tailored so well. Who would make to it? Be, oh, uh, I would have said um, Bioware if they weren't shit now. Obsidian? Obsidian would be oh, yeah. Can, I, yeah. can, I, can yeah. I pitch you on uh, Ninja Theory? Because combat's, combat's a big well, part of it. Combat's a big part of it, combat, yeah. I think it's much more combat focused thing than it is a... But you saw what happened last time they tried to make an RPG. Which was last time, yeah. Was that Ninja? No, no, that was Platinum, sorry. I mean, oh, was with Scalebound. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, Scalebound would have liked to see Scalebound. Yeah. I will, I'll take weird... You know, we commercially beats by Dre. Always, I'll take that. Oh, class. All right, Kat. Um, I got? don't read a lot of uh, young adult, so I would like to a see Harry Potter game. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but um, I really, really like the Model Engine series. So oh, that as like an yes. action adventure Love. kind of thing would really lend itself. Um, even the Divergent series. Mm. And some sci-fi, so maybe Whisper by Lynette Noni, which would be really cool, because you're kind of um, these what? superhumans. And uh, at the start of the book, she's in a mental asylum, but really she's just been conditioned by the people that have captured her. And then she gets let out as this special person now that she's broken. And then they're slowly finding out about this society that's taken over. And um, it's just really cool because you can become like a little, you break out and you join this secret society and mm. it's just, and they're a little bit iffy as well. What kind of genre would that fall into? Um, I don't know. You're just going with the secret world to me. It felt like Australian X-Men. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like that. So, uh, yeah, sci-fi, right. thriller, there's a little bit of scary yeah. stuff happening, okay. a little bit spooky stuff. You yeah. like spooky stuff? Yeah. I reckon that'd be one of the finest games. Alright. I'm gonna pitch it to him. Alright. I'll talk with this. <laughs> yes. Uh, now that you mentioned Young Adult, I think the Hunger Games would be cool. Yeah. I think that would make a cool game. What um, if there was 100 yeah. people, they've yeah. gone through <laughs> <laughs> it's a circle. There's <laughs> <laughs> like, money in this, I'm <laughs> so <laughs> No, but like, <laughs> like, not with other people. Just me and then... A dating No, 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 that's my next... <laughs> It's not so a bad like, idea. Right. Um, or a version of Alice in Wonderland that's fun and doesn't frighten me. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Alice games. Honestly, I'm like, no, I haven't played them. I'm too scared. No, they're not scary. <laughs> yeah, but I'm weak. The yeah, art direction in those games is fantastic. Yeah, I'm sure it is, but scary. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, well, I will go out with my thing. Apart from my Riverdale Telltale Adventure game, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to build, so. build 
build on the young adult theme that we had going before uh, and say I would l I've always wanted to see like a open world reimagining of Shades Children, which is a book by Garth oh, Nix. Yeah. The Revenant was a kid. It's just like it's kind of like uh, it's definitely X Men sort of inspired. But basically, something happens. Uh, all the adults in the world disappear. These sort of interdimensional people in giant mech suits show up and take over the kids and then farm them for like organs. Oh. Uh, and then all the kids develop as a side effect of like radiation. They all develop X Men style superpowers, and you they have to sneak around and sort of subvert what the Overlords are doing. Uh, and it's just like such a good world and concept. And I always thought it would be a fascinating like open world type experience. Uh, the other thing I was going to throw out was I love uh, Kieran Gillen's comics, Open and Divine, and I haven't started Die yet, but I bet I bet you could make a great video game from Die. Um, but Open and Divine, for those who read it, this comic series about the uh, this pantheon of gods who get reincarnated every 90 years, and in the modern incarnation, they're basically pop stars. Uh, and then one of them gets murdered, and it's sort of like Is a mystery about... Is this a SingStar simulation? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would not. I would not be against the yeah. Sing Star style, you know, adaptation of Wicked and the Divine. Like it's, it would be pretty good. Uh, but there's like a lot of like you could do that. You could do a dating sim. There's like so many great options. Uh, this is, you don't even need guns because people like go and like blow people's heads off with their like finger guns. It's, it's great. Yeah, it's great. All right. Well, I think we're just about out. Yeah, we're done. But thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoy your packs. Oh my god. We can do it. We have the technology. We have the technology. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. yeah. There we go. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. You're all good looking people. <laughs> 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 Do 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 do.